Well, folks, it's time to kick it old school. Uh, so you can feel cool. <laughs> Hi, this is Kyle with HKN, and today we are going to be doing a Circuits 2 problem. For this particular problem, we have an NPN BJT, and it is in a voltage divider formation. So what we're going to begin by doing is putting down some simple uh, terms to help us out. This is going to be RE. This is going to be R1. This is going to be R2. And this is going to be RC. Uh, just some explanation behind this. This is the collector. This is the emitter. And this is the base. And so these are frequently going to be referred to by these terms in this problem and other problems you might do in the textbook or in the class. So it's just good to kind of understand where they are. So if it asks for a value, you know where they are. Uh, some other things about this. Just some basic things. VBE is going to be equal to 0 0.7 volts. This is going to help us out immensely in the problem. And then just one more important thing is that this B value over here for beta is equal to IC over IB. There is technically a different form where there are ones involved, but since the difference in value is so minute, we can essentially just treat it as the ratio of these two, and we'll still get the same values. All right, now to start off, we're going to want to solve for VCE, which is the voltage drop across the collector and the emitter. And for this one, once we look at the circuit, we can see that the formula for this is equal to VCC our input voltage up here, minus IC, our current through RC, times RC, plus RE. And now just a quick explanation of why this is. We can essentially think of these two as separate channels. And occurring to Kirchhoff's vo uh, voltage law, the voltage from here to here has to be a voltage drop of 22. The voltage from here to here has to be a voltage drop of 22. So using Ohm's law, if we know the voltage drop across this and the voltage drop across this, we can infer that the difference between these two drops and this is VCE. All right, now to start out, we're going to want to find two values. There are two important values, R thevenin and E thevenin. And the significance of this is this is going to allow us to solve for IB. And the formula for this, IB, is equal to E thevenin minus VBE divided by R thevenin plus beta plus 1. That was that one I was talking about before. And we're going to multiply it by RE. All right, so now we're going to want to find R thevenin. I'm going to write in a nicer color. Everything's starting to look the same. R thevenin is equal to R1 in parallel with R2. And now just a quick refresher if you don't remember with parallel. It's just 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. And then we're going to want to take the inverse of that. All right. I'll keep using that. So now if we go over here, our thevenin is going to be equal to 39 in parallel with 3.9. And these are both in kilo ohms. So when I carry it over, I'm going to get 3.35, sorry, 3.55, 3.55 kilo ohms. That's R thevenin. Next, we're going to find E thevenin. And E thevenin is equal to R2 times VCC divided by R1 plus R2. And so a lot of these formulas, uh, it may, you may ask where are these all coming from. Most of them are given to you or they're in the book. Uh, they can all be derived independently, but just for the sake of time, most of the formulas are given to you. If not, you'd be here for a long time. All right, so now for this one, we're going to want to solve it out. 
we're going to get 3.9 k ohms. Multiply that by 22 volts. Divided by 39 kilo ohms plus 3.9 kilo ohms. And this is going to be equal to 2 volts. Okay. Now we're going to move on to solving for IB. Since we have the two known values, E thevenin and R thevenin, which we previously did not know, IB is going to be equal to E thevenin, which is 2 volts. Minus 0.7, because VBE is equal to 0.7, as we stated earlier. And we're going to be dividing that by 3.55 kilo ohms. Plus 101, because our beta value is 100. Times 1.5 kilo ohms. All right. Now when we saw that out, it's going to be an order of magnitude significantly smaller. Just to explain this, uh, IB is generally smaller, so you're going to be dealing with milliamps here, and this is going to be microamps. So if you're reaching microamp values here and milliamp values here, that's a general indication that you're doing the problem right. Not always, but it's usually a safe bet. So for this case, it's 8.38 microamps. All right. And now what we're going to do is we still need to find IC, but luckily we have this ratio up here which will help us out. So if we do a little math of this ratio, we can find IC is equal to beta times IB. Okay, IC is now equal to 100 times 8.38 microamps. And then IC is going to be equal to 0 0.84 milliamps. All right, so we're almost there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to just plug everything in here and solve it out. Uh, just one thing to note, IE and IC are technically different values. However, since IB is on an order of magnitude so much smaller than IC, we can effectively ignore it and still get the relatively same values, and it really simplifies our calculations and speeds things up. So unless the professor specifically asks you to find the exact value or says you have to include IB, it can generally be omitted from the problem entirely. So home stretch now, VCE is equal to 22 volts, minus 0 0.84 milliamps times 10 kilo ohms. And we're going to add 1.5 kilo ohms and just a little bit of fix here. Sorry about that. VCE is going to be equal to 12.34 volts. And that is going to be our answer for VCE. And just a little side note. You might not always be asked to solve for this particular value. However, just by solving for this circuit, we've effectively found enough information to pretty much solve for any part of this circuit. And in the process of solving for these, we do in fact find every component. So they might ask you for a large string of things to solve for, but just by going through and doing this process every time, you're going to derive most of the values from the get-go. All right.